With our next lesson, we are entering into theme music territory. This song is titled The Green Mountain and it is from a famous movie in China. But we will find this quite often uh, throughout this book. There are a lot of covers of theme music for TV shows, for movies, video games, and such. Uh, just because the Xiao has this really traditional aesthetic that you'll find it quite often in background music and things like this, okay? Uh, also, even if there is a song that is pretty traditional, but for example, it's a song that is sung, there's lyrics, often you can very easily translate that into the Xiao because it has such a large range, it can become a very, very nice lead instrument in that case. So we do a lot of covers. This is just the first of many, okay? But even with that, there are a few things that we do need to pay attention to with this notation, okay? Uh, one thing that we've already covered is we've introduced the double underlined quarter beats, okay? We're gonna use that a little bit more in this song. And you'll notice we have a 96 BPM, so that tempo, that beats per minute is a little bit faster. So because of that, we wanna make sure that we keep our note values very clear, right? Because we'll jump between whole notes, uh, whole beats, to half beats to quarter beats, okay, throughout the song. So we wanna make sure that we keep that timing very clear, okay, so we'll walk through that as well. Another thing you'll notice is the last three, four lines of the song, we have these special brackets, and we have this large bracket over the top that is numbered one, and the last line numbered two, okay? So this is a repeating bracket. Um, this is basically uh, called a volta bracket, and what we're gonna do is we're going to play the song line one, line two, line three. We're going to play through line three, right? Because that repeating bracket is facing inward. And then we're gonna play line four and line five, right? Once we get to the end of line five, we see that other repeating bracket with the dots on the left side, those two dots. And that means return, okay? So we return to the previous bracket. So we go back to the end of line three and we play through a second time from there, okay? Now, when we get to the brackets that are elevated and we have a number one and a number two, on the first play through, we play regular, we play line number five. Now when we return to line number three and we play through again, when we get to line number five, where the beginning of that, uh, that bracket, that elevated bracket begins, we skip down to number two, which is line one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm gonna play through that. So if we start from the end of line three, okay, this will give you a feeling of how we repeat. So I play line three, four, five, like this. then right here in that moment we hit that bracket now I'm gonna instantly jump back to the end of line three where I started again now on the second through at the end of line four I will stop and switch to line number six so then the second time I carry through line six and finish, okay? So that'll be like an easy way to write the notation. That way we don't have to write the entire page out. We just know, oh, all of this section repeats a second time and the ending changes slightly. So you might notice that if there's no repeating bracket to start and you hit that repeating bracket on line five and there's nothing before that, you would go all the way back to the beginning of the song, okay? But because we have a bracket previous to that, we just return to that first bracket. Okay, and then those numbered variations could go on for however long they're listed, three, four, five. You could have more uh, variations. Typically, you'd hit a max at two or three, um, but that's kind of an easy way to understand the repeating brackets, and you just want to play that straight through. So don't pause like I was. I'm just doing that to explain it, okay? And you can hear you got that little bit of a bounce so that uh, at the end of line three, we have that whole note two, whole note six, half one, quarter, two, one, 
than half six five, right? And so you really want to be able to keep that little bit of a bounce with those two quarter notes, and you want to maintain tempo as you go through the song. Okay, so it's a little bit more upbeat. It's a little bright song, um, but it's a really fun piece. It has some pretty common progressions that we have in Xiao. Uh, so I would say take this line by line, um, kind of work your way through it, and then make sure that you understand that notation because I think in the beginning it takes some time for you to hit that repeating bracket and kind of return back to where you're supposed to be. Um, but just give yourself time. You know, this song sounds very nice at a slow tempo, um, but at the standard tempo, uh, more or less, this is what the full piece will sound like. And there is the Green Mountain. Uh, yeah, it's a really fun piece and just pay attention to the rhythm structure uh, in line three, especially we have that six, one, six, five, two, three, one, two, three. Um, we really wanna keep that like a, a steady rate, okay? So even though we have, sometimes when we see that, we see six, one, six, five, two, three, one, t one, two. We think of that as like each individual sections, but remember those half notes are gonna run into each other because we're playing it in legato, right? We have that bracket over the top, so everything is going to smoothly run together. So we have this kind of like walking downstairs uh, sensation, okay? So yeah, that's the Green Mountain. It's a really fun piece. We're starting to pick up the tempo. We're starting to incorporate all of these details, and we're starting to play something that sounds like music rather than just a nursery rhyme. So I hope you enjoy that. Take your time and work through it, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Looking for more information? Sign up for online private lessons.